first about uh, the the rating. I know that's something that's going to concern a lot of people. Yeah, this is the first rated R DC animated movie, and it was rated R for a reason. Yeah, there's there's swearing in here. You're going to get some of that right out of the gate. They let you know pretty early on about yeah. the level of content you're going to have. Um, there is, I'm not. There's sexuality and nudity, but it's it's mostly hidden. I don't remember any the, nudity even. Well, the, the one instance of nudity is non-sexual. Well, okay, there is that. You but know, even then, you're not seeing anything. It's just, yeah, there's it's, a character who's naked. Yeah, yeah but they you never actually see anything that you shouldn't be seeing. There's yeah. always something strategically in front of him. Um, but, yeah, there are there's clear, clearly sex is happening. But what they'll do is they'll, at most, show the lead up. And, like, you'll see a girl in her bra. And then the camera will cut away. Yeah. That's the most you ever actually see. Even though it's clearly implied. And there's a lot of grizzliness, but it's... And, and we were talking about this. I think this is the good kind of grizzliness. There's... We, we get this from the commentary on the first Lord of the Rings movie. We call it the Christopher Lee Principle, yep. which is... In fact, very often what you don't see is far more effective, frightening, suggestive, erotic, than what you do see. A, a good example, as you see this later on, is... Because this isn't like a story point or anything. Is the Joker is talking with a guy, and all you see is he's carefully he shakes hands with a guy, and then he just carefully, while casually talking, is peeling a glove off of his hand, and the guy's not saying anything. You're just, you're seeing over the guy's shoulder. He's holding still, and then the Joker walks away, and you turn around and you find out he's dead, and he's dead with one of those hideous, grisly grimaces and wide open bug eyes that's typical for the Joker. And so that's I think that's better than actually watching him clutching his throat and smiling and all that. Yeah. It's because you don't know just what he what was the Joker looking at while he was talking with him. Did the guy just like click off and or was he like fighting it? You know, we don't know. Yeah. And that's more effective that way. That's just one example that's not critical to the plot. Story starts out. It seems like it's going to be Batgirl's story. It's almost a separate it's, story, really. It's focused on her. We see the world through her eyes, her thoughts her daily interactions, and after the halfway point... Well, yeah, there's like a three-year time jump, and it's just a yeah, different there's movie. A, there's a weird time jump where it's it becomes a completely different movie, where me several of the characters from the first third Major are characters. never mentioned again. Major characters, not just like yeah. a... Yeah. The antagonist of the first part is gone after the first part. He's and this antagonist isn't one. killed or anything, he's yeah, just he's, never brought up again. He's just gone, yeah. yeah. And and you wonder why, you know, and maybe it's the adaptation, because I've never read the comic of The Killing Joke, I know Kim hasn't either, but maybe the comic, you know, someone here go ahead and say, uh, does the comic make a more easy transition to the latter half of the story? Because to us, it just kind of, it's telling the story, and then, three years later, even though it doesn't even say three years later, you have to pick it up from the dialogue. Yeah. Because Batman's investigating the murder and says, these people have been dead for three years, and all, you know. Um... And then, once once you hit this pivot point, after that, you have one more scene that involves Barbara, Batgirl, in which something terrible happens to her. Probably the most famous part of the killing joke, so you probably so know what it is, but we won't mention for the those who have it. Yeah. doesn't know. Something terrible happens to Barbara. She gets one very brief scene after that. But for the last hour of this movie, she's not there at all. She's, and even that last scene doesn't really matter. She doesn't yeah. provide anything, any, any she doesn't important provide information. Any information. She, she says something to Batman that ought to be important, but the next scene immediately renders that moot. Yeah, he, he has the information he needs. And it's not like Batman needed motivation to do this. this is, she's basically saying, Batman, solve this crime. And He's Batman. He's trying to solve the crime already. And it feels to me... And maybe this is unfair, but it feels a little women in refrigerators no, to it, me. No, it does to me too, big time. Where this horrible thing happens to Barbara, and but we're, we're not concerned with seeing her get back from that or recover from it. No, the story now becomes Batman's, and it's him defeating the villain, and Barbara is off in timeout. And we don't care about her So, anymore. yeah, she's just gone through this terrible thing, a life-changing thing. Again, if you know, you already know what this is. And it, it, it robs her of not just her agency, which kind of makes sense that what's done to her is deliberately done to rob her yeah. of her agency by the villain. It's a deliberate, Yeah, it's awful a deliberate thing. thing to do this to her. But uh, it, it's like not just the villain 
decided to slap her back, but the author, too, yeah. decided, we don't care about you anymore, Barbara, go sit in your corner. You are now taken out of protagonist status. Yeah, no one, no one, no one gives it about you anymore. And I would have liked it if they had given her something to do in the last act of this movie. Well, what is especially weird is this was originally a one-off Elseworld story, and this thing that happens to Barbara that changes her became part of canon continuity, and so, of course, it mattered because of that. But this this is done clearly to tie in. It was made by Bruce Timm, um, famous from Batman the Animated Series. Uh, it's got Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy, the original actors. Uh, so it's clearly made with like an, an eye to the audience of that original show. But in the continuity of that show, this does not fit. This is not the animated series characters. It can't be, because of nothing else, in Batman Beyond, we see Barbara Gordon, and she is not... In, she, there, this could not have happened to her in the past. Yeah. Well, and part of it, too, you were talking about how they're clearly trying to, t to tie into the Bruce Timverse, and yet not quite, because... Both Batman and Batgirl in this story do some rather out of character things. One thing in particular, right at the yeah. end of the first third, yeah. Yeah, right, at, right at the end of the first act, there's. It, we, yeah, it's like it, 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 yeah, it just feels out of character. Especially for Batman, I can, especially Batman. I can see her maybe getting into in, this in her but, youthful inexperience and naivete. But yeah. he should know better. He should. Yeah. He should know better. And, and again, it's just like with other things, this whole weird thing that changes their dynamic in a lasting, permanent way is never really brought up. All it is is the thing that puts a wedge between well, them. Well, and it's not necessary to the story because there was already a wedge between them and there are so many other things that could have exacerbated that yeah. wedge other than this thing that they chose to do, which, in my opinion, kind of goes hand in hand with the women in the refrigerator's it's it's a bad writing of a female character, in yeah. my opinion. Well, it would be, to use a outlandish example, it would be like doing a story about Batman and Robin parting ways, and instead of them having a fight over philosophy and their differences, which is in character, it would be like if suddenly they get into a fight and Robin takes a knife and tries to cut Batman, and so Batman takes a knife and cuts Robin's ear off. It's like, it's this lasting thing you can't take back, yeah. and it's so out of character for both of them, but even more so Batman. Yeah. Um... But, uh, but yeah, we, we about like we said, about a third of the way in, this story pivots and becomes a completely different story. And, and it's much better at that point, in my opinion. And now the antagonist is the Joker. He's not the same as the character you get in Batman the Animated Series. Again, now he's still the Joker, unlike Jared Leto. Yeah. <clears throat> um, because he is still being funny. But he's a colder, darker version And he's of more formal, because he's taken yeah. his lines right out of the comics, so you get that, but it's kind of like if you try to dramatize the Bible, and then someone's talking, but they're talking in the Bible speak, and so it doesn't feel like natural speech when you hear it. Same thing, th what, what they're saying, doesn't. it feels like they're doing a long speech. One moment you're lost in a carnival of delights, childhood aromas, the flashing neon of puberty, all that sentimental candy floss. Some of this dialogue is lifted right from the original yeah. comic. It comes off rather stilted and speechifying in some yeah. places. Which just doesn't feel like the Joker that we saw in the animated series who just like would just have fun and be yeah. wacky and crazy. You know, he wouldn't sit there and like tell... Even when he's telling a joke, he's telling a long, detailed... It just doesn't feel the same. It's not that it's an illegitimate Joker. It's just not the same Joker, even if it's the same voice. So just be prepared. Again, this is not This is not just Bruce Timm finally got an R rating and he was able to make his Joker a willing to kill and all that. It's a different Joker. Yeah, there's an issue with the ending. Yeah, um, I do know about this because there are bits I've seen of the original and especially the ending. And again, anyone who knows the original comic knows about the ending, and it's the ending, I think is actually what makes this really masterful in the comic. The ending is a question mark, and it's the nature of just being a comic. Yeah, it's a, it's a Lady or the Tiger ending, where a choice is clearly made, but the reader doesn't know and has to decide for themselves what exactly it is that happened here. It's basically, it's a part where both Batman and the Joker are laughing, it's like they have different texts, so it's very clear. And then, and then something happens between panels, and it's different. And we don't see what's happening. We're looking at a puddle and a vague reflection. So you can't tell. And that question, it, it's poignant and it's meaningful. And I, I think, well, to put it simply, I think Batman did what many people think he did. Um, but in this one, 
Kim did not know that at all, and yeah, she was confused. Yeah, started rolling credits, and I'm like, wait, that's the end? What even was that? Because they didn't hide that moment, because it's a moving picture, so you can't just go, panel, panel, what happened in between those yeah, panels? you can't have gap between panels. And, and so, they, and they didn't hide it in another way. They didn't yeah, they hide. Didn't choose to do like a cut. Or the possible like event. No, just, I, I think they were too worried about being stylish, stylized like the comic instead of adapting it to the format. And I think it really takes away. You have to know the comic getting to be able to appreciate it. Look at that. Kim yeah, was completely I, lost. I didn't realize that there was a question there. Yeah, you just thought it was just like, a, um, what is this a student French film or something? Yeah, yeah I was just, like, oh, okay. And the <laughs> bike had no rider and it rolled by. What? I, you know, I, I think all they all they had to do was have a really loud thunder crack and the lightning flash, and then the thing I mentioned that changed between panels changes. Just have that be. And then that would probably be, at least, you would realize what might have happened. Yeah. And that's the point, is just to realize what might have happened, and then you fill in the gaps yourself. So, overall, I would say this is worth seeing, wouldn't you? You and I are very close, but I think I came away with a little more negative than you on this. But okay. it's not at all bad. I didn't, I didn't hate this movie. It didn't make me mad. But I think, for me, the flaws were a little stronger than the, the strengths. Um, I did like, we see a backstory for the Joker, and I found it very sympathetic and interesting. Um, I liked the flashbacks of the Joker. I wish they, I would have liked to see that spread out a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the main question is, how closely are you attached to the characterizations of these characters from the animated series? Yeah, because if you're... Which is weird because, you, you're, again, you're tying right to the animated series with the casting and that Bruce Timm, and that was their big advertising. Mm -hmm. And then they're deviating from significant aspects of those characters. And it seems like a very odd thing. It, you know, it's a lot like Suicide Squad, actually, the movie we just watched that, too, where it's like you're building all this fandom. Okay, like, just to use an example of the Joker, a lot of people are not liking the Joker from that movie, and yet you made the Joker so central to the ad. And it's like, why would you do that just to get people excited about seeing the Joker come in and then have this Joker who's so different and really not the Joker? Uh, you know, clue, the Joker should tell jokes at some point in the story. <laughs> best, best aspects of this show would be Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, definitely on point. Yeah. Um, animation, excellent, as always. Yeah, that's standard for DC. Um, they've got some really... They've got some really good usage of, like we said, the Christopher Lee principle. There are moments in this where you will wince or 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 go, oh, you know. Although so, yeah. I have to say, there is a point where the Joker takes someone, and this is the naked one we were talking about before. He takes someone and puts him through what's supposed to be a maddening break his mind situation, and it just doesn't seem that intense. And I think again, I think the still yeah. images sell this more than seeing it because he basically puts him into a. Uh, uh, little haunted, haunted yeah, little funhouse car, little funhouse car, yeah. and the funhouse car has crazy stuff in it, and, and it's like stuff that will hurt, break his heart certainly, that well, involve him personally. Seem like this, it doesn't seem like this would destroy a man's mind. Yeah, it's like I've seen better examples. Just Ace from Justice it's, League. It's not exactly Clockwork Orange. Yeah, this isn't like the this isn't mind bending horror. This is just like you're taking me off because this is someone I love. You're showing me that it's that kind of thing. Yeah. So it, it, I think it fails because it's it's trying to in that moment it's trying to build just like this intense insanity of it all and the, the Joker's talking about you know choose your own reality and all this and it's like it, oh and there's a musical number yeah and, and it just it doesn't <laughs> work it doesn't work for me it feels it it's in that part it did feel like Jared Leto because it's trying so hard but it's not backing up it's it's telling and not showing I think that sequence really was a failure for me. I would still say see it because I think it's got some interesting discussion points. It's something. It's something. It's not so bad that you'll say, "Oh," and yeah. want to turn it off. But you will probably have, if you're a story talking person, you'll have lots of story to talk about and pick apart and question some of the less well made decisions yeah. on this. And the good ones too. Like I say, there is good. I like the Joker's backstory. I thought it was interesting. Um... You know, it, it, he is a very different person when he, before he became the Joker. So you you would come down on the do not recommend? Um, I would say recommend out of curiosity, but don't have your expectations too high. It would be yeah. better it would be better to have them low and say this is better than I expected. I was expecting a masterpiece, and I think that was part of the problem is keep your expectations low, and it probably won't disappoint you like me. And even then, I wasn't like wretchedly disappointed. Just yeah. I was hoping it would no, be better. We've seen we've seen stuff from DC recently that was 
painful to get through. This was not that. Yeah, it's not painful to get through. It's just it could probably be a little better with a little more work. So that's our call on Killing Joke. Uh, check it out. Don't check it out. So as usual, decide for yourself. Decide for yourself. <laughs> Talk to you later.